clear comprehension of deliverance from defilement. In walking to and from, in looking ahead and in looking aside, he appears clear comprehension of deliverance from defilement. In bending and stretching, he applies clear comprehension of deliverance from defilement. In wearing robes, in eating, drinking, chewing, savoring, and answering the calls of nature, he applies clear comprehension of delivering deliverance from defilement. Walking, standing, sitting, lying down, and keeping awake, speaking and being silent, he applies clear comprehension of deliverance from defilement. Narration. The above stated clear comprehension of deliverance from defilement and mindfulness of the postures cannot be separated from each other. Everyone who regards the teachings of the Exalted One as worth grasping and mastering should practice, develop, and pursue these fundamental, med fundamental as, med as meditation. Since life is engrossed in worldly affairs and defilement with which taints, it is not easy to liberate from the shackles of samsara, repeated existence. The efficiency of this path lies in the practice of it. Therefore, one should be heedful, ardent, and mindful. Once Venerable Ananda, during a Dhamma discussion, advised a lad by the name of Suba how the threefold training, training in virtue, training in concentration, and training in wisdom should be cultivated. There, Sabha queried, queried from then Ananda thus, What, sir, is the is the concentration praised and commanded by your teacher, Master Gautama, the concentration that his disciples are advised to exercise, cultivate, develop, and pursue. Venerable Ananda replied him detail, detailing pre, the pre, pre, sorry, prerequisites for the development of right concentration. The astute disciple must be virtuous, controlled in the senses, and contented. He dwells mindfully with clear comprehension. Then he spends time in secluded comp contemplation and tries to gain the tranquility of mind by subduing the five hindrances. The increase of these very things is the development of concentration. Mindfulness and clear comprehension, comprehension play an important role here. One who has unrestrained sense organs cannot maintain to any clear comprehension for deliverance from defilement. Therefore, controlling of the sense organs is an essential fact. The Blessed One hath thus characterized the unexcelled development of the faculties of Ven Nanda. Monks, Nandas, restrains, restrains his facilities, faculties, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind in this matter. He is vigilant in regard to his actions. If Anna wants to look towards the east, he does so mindfully. He makes himself fully alert and remains thus heedful, ardent, and resolute, abandoning sensual cravings, greed, and distress. Nanda has a clear comprehension of deliverance from defilement. He follows the same way with clear comprehension of deliverance from defilement when he is looking toward and looking away in all directions. The Exalted One further explained about the dwelling in mindfulness and clear comprehension. Monks, Nanda's constant mindfulness towards four foundations of mindfulness and clear comprehension of deliverance from defilement is such. Nanda is mindful at all times wide awake and vigilant in regard to all sensations which, when they arise, exist and disappear. He is wide awake and vigilant in regard to all his perceptions when they arise, exist and disappear. He is a wide awake and vigilant in regard to all his distracting thoughts when they arise, exist and disappear. Efforts for deliverance from defilement, clear comprehension and complete awareness, these are the ways which the one cultivates true wisdom. Thus he dwells observing the body in the body internally, or he dwells in observing the body in the body externally, or he dwells observing the body in the body both internally and externally. Thus he dwells observing the phenomenon of arising in the body. Thus he dwells observing the phenomenon of passing away in the body. Thus he dwells observing the phenomenon of rising and passing away in the body. Now his awareness is established. This is body. Thus he develops his awareness to such an extent that there is mere understanding along with mere awareness. In this way he dwells detached, devoid of self or ego or living in entity, without clinging towards anything in the world of mind and matter. This is how monks, a monk dwells in observing, remains focused on all the bodily activities, body and body. The end of this section on mindfulness and bodily activities with clear comprehension of deliverance from the following.
All right. So, any comments on it? And did you understand? Clear comprehension of deliverance from department. We call Sampajana Pabba. Sampajana. Clear comprehension and mindfulness. What, what did you get from that? You know, or just you hear that um, you know all the text. Yeah. When you're aware, you are more fulfilled. It's fulfilled. More. I don't know the word for it. More. When you're when you when, you're, when you have a comprehension of something, then you're yeah. more aware. Yeah. Of everything yes. around you. Yeah. And you have yeah. more of understanding. Yeah. And you don't let any defilement to make a mess in your life. Mm. That's the point. <laughs> or we can say, nothing can screw up your life. If you have clear comprehension, we have that problem. So otherwise, it just, it just a word, just a word can make, makes you upset. It's just a word, a little word. And also, if someone's little action, behavior, can make you upset. And if a little object can ignite anger in you, greed in you, lust in you. To avoid that, what we need to have is that clear, comprehensive abilities with mindfulness. So you become more aware of things, and you, you're not just aware of them, you, have, you think wisely also about things which are around you. So you, you, you have a very strong, clear, comprehensive abilities. So you can comprehend things that is, ha that is going on around you, that is happening around you very clearly. And then you can react to it very nicely and you don't let any defilement to arise in your mind. As an example, so while we are here, we, you know, all of you uh, may have felt that a nice man came out of the kitchen, <laughs> right? And the nose, and the uh, fragrance, that aroma, that smell, both of them, together, consciousness, with the consciousness, Make, we made and made a contact, which we call nose contact. Because of that contact, you had a feeling. You may have it all. I say, okay, when is the dinner time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, should be delicious. Oh no, you know, now you go to the kitchen you know, when you have dinner time uh, with, you know, delighted mind. <laughs> or maybe, you know, so, now you're trying to, you're going to try it. You try it. Oh. If it is not delicious as you visualize in your mind, <laughs> based on this map, you get up the door, oh, no, it's not very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if it is very delicious, you know, wow, this is very delicious. How did they, how did she make this? And now then you go, you, you get closer to the cook or chef and he asks, how, how did you make this? What did you use to make this? You right? So many things are going on in your mind. You don't know that you are distracted. Right? You couldn't let, you couldn't simply let go of that smell and see as an smell and see how you, how a feeling arose in you and let go of the uh, idea or judgment, judgmental thought that occurred in your mind. You were just distracted. You were driven away by that. 
then you couldn't, you can meditate if your mind goes away to such objects. And also, that's why we can't see the reality of the smell and of the nose and of the nose consciousness and also the contact. contact. So when we don't understand them, when we can't see them, how can we see the reality? Am I being clear? Right? So as an example, so you can eat them, you can have it in it. Sorry, I'm a bit confused. Yeah. So you're saying in meditation, then it's just basically having the focus on the smell and the contact and the thought of it, or but not necessarily. No, that is like you like that you f- when you feel or when you have feeling of like smell. So that is what <coughs> you feel right now, right? So you are aware of the present moment. So uh, not only just what, not only when you are meditating and maybe we are, you know, we are walking and you are talking to somebody else and then <coughs> the smell comes and then you have, you begin to have thoughts about it and you are going to talk about it and think about it and there's so many things are going on but you don't understand how that happened. You are aware of it, right? So just being aware of like, the present moment is yes. basically the purpose exactly. of meditation? Yeah, it's a great tool to be uh, mindful of the present moment because when, when you are able to focus on the present moment, you can see the reality of the present. Because you cannot see the reality based on the f- future, can you? <laughs> and the other thing is that you can, the, you can understand the reality of the life based on the past. You can't. You only can experience the present moment. That's why we need to come to the present and look into it and then you can see the inside of it. That's why it's important to bring the mindfulness to the present moment. Yeah, that's why we need to practice clear comprehension, yeah? But, but when we're in the like, meditation on the breathing, yeah. And we don't follow these sounds and smells, right? We come back to the breathing. Yes. We don't yeah. focus on that. Yes, yeah. So, uh, <coughs> you can come back to the breathing if you, uh, if you know that you were distracted. And if you were distracted by it, if you were, di- if you were distracted by it, and then you, you, had to, you have to know, uh, you, ha- you have to recognize that. Otherwise, you can come back to the uh, your meditation object. So then, what helps you to come back to the meditation object is the clear comprehension. It is a tool that we use to strengthen our awareness, to be aware of the present moment. So when you are aware of the breath, right, you know, uh, at the uh, the nostril, <coughs> or, you know, you have you feel the air touch when you breathe in and when you breathe out, right? So what you have as present moment is there is a body. There's a body. The body is made of four elements. The earth element, the water element, and the heat element, and the air element. That's another way to define our body. It's made of four elements. Even this hall, Everything is made of four elements. Earth, water, earth means solidified thing, rough thing. You know, our body has bone, bone marrow, all the all those are solidified thing. And also there's a liquid. You know, water, watery thing, liquid. That's a water element. We do have them, right? You know, we do have, you know, blood, and, you know, p- pus and all the stuff. And those are <laughs> what element? I don't, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> so, uh, and the other one, the heat element. We do have a temperature in our body. So if we lose that temperature, we can, we may die. Right? So we, our body needs its own, its a temperature Otherwise, this cannot survive. So, even though you are a big, rich person, even though you are a beautiful woman or handsome man, 
If you lose the temperature of the body, you die. Doesn't matter who, who you are. And the other thing is the uh, air element. Breathe in and out is the air. And you do have air in lungs and your belly and also all the parts of our body. That's why we can move our hands and the, there's the air in the, our eyes. And you, you call the pressure. You, know, you check with the blood pressure and the pressure, you know, the eye pressure. I don't know. Yeah, eye pressure, right? You check the pressure in the eye, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if it is very high, you die. If it is very low, that's also a problem. So it should be balanced. As long as these four elements are balanced and react each other, the bodies can be survived. It survives. But once they are unbalanced, you feel sick. You are sick. So we need to understand the body as the body. Because body is the body. It's not anything else. We consider the body as me, as mine, as myself. It is because of the lack of true knowledge. But body is the body. It's not who you think. Who? What it is. It's a body. It's a conditional thing. It is made of four elements. It, it, it depends on food and water. If you don't have them, if you don't have food, you die. Right? So, when we have clear comprehensive abilities that we use in our daily -day life actions, the daily life, you are able to recognize that reality. You can see the body as the body. You can see it. You don't want to believe that. You can see it. That's the way to bring your awareness to make a contact with the reality, to make a conscious contact with the reality. So if you want to see the games of the town, you have to go to the games of the town. And then you can see town, you can see buildings, and you have to look around, you have to walk around to see all the side of it. And if you only see one side, we can say that I saw everything of the town. Right? So, normally we only see one side of things. That is the pleasure. We see that there is a pleasure when we see something, if it makes you happy, you like it. Because you, you saw only one side. We don't open our mind and look around it and think wisely about it. If you talk about um, this paper, so now you can see only one side. I only can see one side. Can you see both sides now? Now you can see that. But you have to look the other side. So everything, every feeling that we feel, every perception that we have, every idea that we have, they do have different side. So try three dimension. We need to look all the side around, up, up and down and other sides to have a clear picture of what we see now. So likewise, there is a big inside a spiritual way to look at things including our feeling, our mind, our thought that we want to see them we want to see the way they arise that's the first side the second side, the way they disappear third one, the gratification, the pleasure of that what is the pleasure of that? not only that what is the danger of it? What, is, what are the difficulties? What, are, what is the danger of that thing? And the fifth one, what is the cessation of it? Once you see all these five things, five sides, 
you can make the right decision. So when we see things like that, if we come to the last one, the cessation, what is that? The let go of the desire that we have towards that pleasure. Because we see that that has an arising phenomena and vanishing phenomena and also it has pleasure over it and then if we only see the pleasure what we do is we get attached to it, we like it because we only see the pleasure so we like it, we enjoy it but the thing is at the same time you are afraid of losing it and also when you lose it you suffer you are stressful you are under depression you have fear, anxiety because you only saw one side so then you, you, when you meet with the danger but you don't understand the danger so then you are so sad and then you try to get help from somebody who maybe he is invisible, maybe visible please help me, please help me, then people tend to do that they do think because they don't understand the way they arise, the way they passed away therefore naturally being because of the lack of true knowledge then we tend to ask a help and give our responsibilities to others please take care of me but it doesn't happen you have to take care of yourself by seeing the, all the side of things so if you see the danger of them if you see the way things arise and the way things pass away and then you see it has a pleasure, well, yeah, it's true it has a pleasure away so you, you will feel that pleasure but you are mindful of it and you have clear comprehensive abilities and you comprehend it very clearly and then because you know you can see the danger of it too therefore you can remain and live without getting attached to it and then nothing can bother you nothing can hurt you that can that when, when, it, when you are going to lose that it doesn't hurt you you're not suffering, you're not under depression because you can let go of it because you saw all the side of it that is why you, you can make a right decision then you relinquish yes sir yeah so it's okay to enjoy the smell of the food right? I mean you can enjoy it there's no problem enjoying it when you feel it moment. yeah wait a minute when you have that feeling, you can't let go of that feeling. What you can do is, you can do, you can let go of the desire that you have towards that feeling. You cannot, you cannot uh, <coughs> make that, uh, yeah, make that disappear. But you want to be aware of it. It's going to disappear anyway. Right. So, so long as you're aware, <laughs> only one thing you can do: you have to be aware of it and mindful and understand it very clearly. And be peaceful without being over rejoicing. If you over rejoice it, you just feel it. You feel it, but you don't get attached to it. It means you can live without that. But people, they can't live without that. Yes? So you're saying if, you, if you're experiencing sadness or sorrow, you just feel it and yeah. then just let it go? Yeah, I will tell you that when you have, when you have another session, mm -hmm. then how feelings go and how you should understand that mm -hmm. the feelings because we, the, there are three types of major feelings that uh, we call happy feeling sad feeling and neutral feeling neither of them neither of them uh, cannot be considered as you you cannot consider any of them as you because they do, they do change so we, we can talk about that so um, the clear comprehension is it's very helpful that you need to apply it when you stretch in, stretch out and when you look around, when you talk to somebody if you have that when you talk to somebody you will get less problem because you don't talk useless things and unwisely and you don't talk uh, any troublesome words that can ignite anger in others you talk nicely and you because you you can see you can you understand what are you uh, talking about you see it it's very clear so, so then because you don't let anger to control you 
You don't let uh, defilements to handle you. You let Dhamma, the nature, to handle you. You let the wholesome actions to handle you. So that means you engage in wholesome action. So you are aware of everybody, everything, and you react to things nicely when you have com clear comprehensive ability. That's why you need to be aware of the present moment and see them deeply. Uh, then you so norm then you see the normally, then you see normally. So when someone blame you, so you don't react to it at once because your major duty is n not to let uh, anger arise in you. That's the first thing. Then you can react to it nicely with kindness and compassion. You can avoid him. You can talk to him later when he's calmed down. But if you are going to talk back to him when he's angry, then anger grows very fast like a fire. But if you talk to him later, once he's cool or she's cool down, then we can have a nice conversation and let go of the misunderstanding. So it is totally up to the way we think and the way we look at things. That's why clear comprehension, the mindfulness helps. It helps a lot. When, even when we wear a robe, even when you eat food, you won't understand why you are eating food. Why? What is the purpose of having food? What is the purpose of having a drink of, having a glass of water? Why? <laughs> you know, you eat food to uh, keep your body alive. You nourish your body. That is the purpose of having it. Not to, not to um, grow your muscles and hit somebody and beat someone and show off ourselves to others and I am greater than you, I am big than you and I am good than you. No. Not for those stuff. We only eat for it to keep our body survive and keep, you know, keep hunger away from us and live comfortably without having painful feeling of hunger. That's the whole point of having food. So we think when we are going to eat food, when we have a bowl of food, of, you know, bowl of food we think we, we chant it, that's it, you know, we comprehend the purpose. We look into it and we see why I am having food. Once you, more you become clear comprehensive and more you become mindful, you will not tend to eat at all the time. You will not eat sweet things at all the time. So you, you won't get addicted to food. So th that means you can live without them. If you are getting addicted to them, you cannot live without them. You cannot live without a cup of coffee because that means you are addicted to that. But we can live without a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or sweets and snacks. We can live. But we, can, we, we cannot live without them if we let it happen. And if you are not aware of it, if you don't know the purpose of using it. 